Hi, this video is going to go over the basics of solving quadratic equations. First of all, by factoring, then by taking square roots, then by completing the square, and finally by the quadratic formula. Okay, here's the first one we're going to work on. 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 equals 0. When we solve by factoring, we have to factor completely, set each factor equal to zero, and solve. So there is no greatest common factor to pull out, so this is a backwards FOIL problem. My options for the F of FOIL is 2x and x, there's no other option. But when I look at the two numbers that go here, they have to multiply to give me 12. So my options are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. Now, because I get a negative 12, one of these has to be positive and one has to be negative. So I, I just pick one and try it. So I'm going to try 1 and 12. When I try the plus 1 and negative 12, you can see that the O plus the I gives me negative 24x plus 1x, which is negative 23x. That's not what I want. I need a positive 5x. So we keep working the different options until I find the correct one. Okay, when I use a minus 3 and a plus 4, I get 8x for my O, negative 3x for my I, equals 5x, which is what I'm looking for, which means that's the correct combination. Okay, now, the zero product property says that if I have a product equal to zero, which I do, I now have this quantity times this quantity equals zero. And if I have a quantity of two numbers that equal zero, one of them has to be zero. So I can set each one, 2x minus 3 equal to zero, or x plus 4 equals zero. And when I solve those, for this one, I would add 3 to both sides and get 2x equals 3. So x equals 3 halves. Or, if I subtract 4 from both sides, I get x equals a negative 4. So the solution that I get for this equation is x equals 3 halves or x equals negative 4. Now we're going to solve by taking square roots. This is the only method that requires that you have a specific type of quadratic. Notice that there is no x term. We call x term the linear term. There is no linear term. All I have is the x squared term and the constant. If that's the case, then you can isolate the x squared and then solve by square roots. Okay, I've solved for the x squared and I have x squared equals 24. At this point, to undo the x squared, I need to take the square root of both sides of this equation. I put in my plus or minus because I do not know whether um, x was a positive or a negative number to begin with, so I must put in the plus or minus, and then I'll continue to solve. On the left side, I have x because the square and does the square root, and on the right side, I have plus or minus radical 24, but I need to break that down. Radical 4 times radical 6, I know that's 2. This would break down further, but that really doesn't help me any. So what I end up with my final answer is x equals plus or minus 2 radical 6. Now we're going to take a look at the next method, which is to solve by completing the square. We're going to start with a, a very simple example, and then we'll do one that involves fractions. Okay, here's our problem. It's x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. The first thing we need to do is to get that 8 on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. And then when I rewrite my problem, I'm going to going to have a negative 8 on the right. And now I want to choose what goes here. I'm going to put a plus blank here, and then to keep my equation balanced, I have to add the same thing to the other side. 
Now to decide what goes in the blank, I need to take half of this number, which would be a negative 3, and I'm going to square it to get 9. That's what goes here, and that's what goes way over here. I have to put a plus 9 and a plus 9. Now, I took half of negative 6 and squared it. Actually, if you just look at the 6, take half of it and square it, either way you'll get a 9. So it doesn't matter if you want to think half of it is a negative 3 or half of it is a positive 3, you'll still get 9 for your blank. Now when I factor this, backwards FOIL is going to give me x not plus 3, actually it's x minus 3, x minus 3. Because I need two numbers that multiply to give me a positive 9 and add to give me a negative 6. Now here's where you might want to consider that negative because the number that goes here is the half of number. It's this guy right here, the negative 3. Alright, on the other side I just have negative 8 plus 9 is 1. Now you might be able to just go right to this step and write x minus 3 quantity squared equals 1. Because when you factor this, you are always going to get a perfect square because we chose the 9 so that I would get a quantity squared. Now, at this point, we take the square root of both sides and we put in our plus or minus. And now the square and the square root undo each other and we just get what was underneath. And over here, the square root of 1 is 1, so I get plus or minus 1. I need to solve for x, so I add 3 to both sides. And I like to write it with the plus or minus in the middle, so I'm going to write the positive 3 and then the plus or minus 1. So my final answer, I'm going to take 3 plus 1, which is 4, or 3 minus 1, which is 2. I have two answers and I must put the word or in between. Alright, this is the same problem that we solved by factoring. Um, so we already know what the answer is going to be like. We're going to solve it this time though by completing the square. The first thing you need to remember that is when you solve by completing the square, you must have a coefficient of 1 in front of the x squared. If you don't, divide through by whatever that coefficient is all the way on both sides so that you now have just an x squared. So I get x squared plus 5 halves x minus 6 equals 0. The next thing you need to do is get that minus 6 on the right side. So add it to both sides so that it's now on the right side. Put in a plus blank because we want to choose what number goes in the blank. Now to take to find what goes in the blank we need to take one half of my coefficient of x, in this case it's 5 halves, Take one half of that, gives me 5 fourths, and square it, and that's what goes in both of these blanks. So that's going to be a 25 sixteenths. Alright, on the left side we're going to factor, and it's and when I do my backwards FOIL and I say what numbers multiply to give me 25 over 16 and add to give me 5 halves, the answer is 5 fourths. So I get x plus 5 fourths, quantity squared, equals, okay, now over here, I'm going to have to do this addition. So I'm going to kind of come up, come up in the corner here. 6 over 1 is the same as 96 over 16. And if I add that to 25 sixteenths, I'm going to get 121 sixteenths. So that's what all of this is going to simplify to. So I often call this kind of my cloud work. It's my scratch work on the side. So I'm going to come over here and put 121 over 16. All right, now I need to solve by taking the square root of both sides. Now it's just like we did in the last problem with these square roots. I'm going to put a plus or minus in, 
and continue with my problem. The square and the square root undo each other, and I get x plus 5 fourths equals plus or minus the square root of 121 is 11, the square root of 16 is 4. Now I simply need to subtract 5 fourths from both sides. Now you can see I've subtracted 5 fourths from both sides, and on the right side, I like to put this number in front of the plus or minus fraction, because now when I, I think through this, I say negative 5 fourths minus 11 fourths, that's negative 16 fourths, or negative 5 fourths plus 11 fourths, which is a positive 6 fourths. So my final answer is going to be x equals negative 4, or 3 halves when I get that simplified. Okay, to solve by the quadratic formula, we need to take our equation, make sure it's in standard form, then we look at the quadratic formula, and from our equation, I know that a is the coefficient of the x squared, so that's 2 b is the coefficient of the x term, which is 5, a positive 5, and c, which is the constant, for this problem it's a negative 12. I simply need to put those numbers into the formula. When I put in the opposite of b, that would be negative 5, put in my negative 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 12. Now I do know right away that I'm going to have and I'm going to have x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25. And now this is a negative and another negative, so this is going to turn out to be plus. And if I look at this, I have 8 times 12, that's 96. And that's all over 4. Let's continue. All right, when I get down to this point, I again need to come up with my two answers. x equals a negative 5 plus 11, which is 6, so that's 6 over 4, or negative 5 minus 11, which is negative 16 over 4. So my final answer is x equals 3 halves, or negative 4. This is the same answer that I got when I did it by factoring and when I did it by completing the square.